about the issue that she's working on now with the community groups in, in Boricay, which is on the subject of the sacred sites in uh, Puerto Rico and beyond eventually, but uh, right now dealing with uh, sacred sites and ancestral remains on the island of Puerto Rico. So with that, I want to introduce and give a, uh, please give a warm welcome to Naniki Reyes Ocasio. to thank also the Education Department for having really upheld its mandate by opening this opportunity for us to dialogue about this issue. Um, and I'd also like to thank the American Museum of History for having provided the space um, for us to dialogue on an issue that I know is very contentious. Um, and oftentimes we are on different sides. So I, I'm really grateful um, for them having opened up this space and this opportunity for us. I'd like for us to just stand up and, and for us to just say a small prayer of gratitude uh, together. Uh, okay. Most recently, La Tumba del Indio was looted and burned. The ancestral remains on display were dropped and broken by the looters. We find that internet pages boldly show and offer for sale sacred objects. Sacred objects used only during very special ceremonies are on display and peered at by spectators. Sacred sites are defiled by graffiti, garbage, looting. The looting has reached such a level that people cut into the walls of caves, of caves and remove slabs where petroglyphs and petroglyphs which tell the story of the people and the messages left by the ancestors can no longer be read because they are missing pieces, important pieces of that story. Bulldozers rip open, open Mother Earth and destroy the resting places of our ancestors to build superhighways and other land development projects without complying with the necessary studies to determine whether there are burial sites on these proposed construction sites. Advanced technology that could determine before bulldozing that these sacred sites exist, exist there are not used, and oftentimes we are told that they are not used because it's too expensive. Sacred bundles have been contaminated with arsenic and other chemicals, which pose severe health threats to the people to whom they have been repatriated. And this information has not been given to those people until after. Tourists have free access to our sacred sites, to our ceremonial centers, while we are often asked to go through lengthy administration processes in order to get the site for ceremonial uses. While uncountable ancestral remains and sacred artifacts are still in the possession of museums and private collections and government agencies, countless others are still threatened by the illegal looting, by the illegal sales, by private and government development projects. And yes, emotions do run high. And so they should. The issue of repatriation of ancestral remains and sacred artifacts, as well as the protection against the continued desecration of burial sites and the destruction of sacred sites cuts deeply into the way of life and spiritual core of native peoples. It is a most deplorable violation of our basic human rights and dignity. 
the greatest threat to our basic human rights is the racism and colonialism that underscores the root framework and deep-seated values of mainstream society that gave rise to the repatriation movement of today. The two prevailing perceptions of Native people sit at opposite extremes. On the one hand, as long as we don't rock the boat, that we continue to share, to care, to teach and dialogue, we are seen as the noble savage. However, on the other hand, and at the other extreme, as soon as we exert and exercise our basic human rights, stand up and speak out about the injustices, the destruction of Mother Earth and all our relations, or resist the physical, intellectual, spiritual, and cultural genocide, we become the fear, hostile savage that must be annihilated. Both these views are embedded in racism and colonialism. It is the very source of these stereotypes that permits the dehumanization and objectification of Native peoples throughout the world today. It is about power and about the his story of a nation suckled, weaned, and raised on the social ethics forged by racism and colonialism. These prevailing social structures within mainstream society are built upon a foundation of conquering and destruction of nations of native peoples who were already here. Cultural appropriation is an integral part of the structures that continue to devastate native lands, culture, spirituality, traditions, and way of life today. It is a deplorable theft that takes over the culture, spiritual practices, ceremonies, remains, artifacts, and knowledge of a people. An assault on the physical, spiritual, intellectual, and cultural integrity of Native people. It creates and fosters the myth of extinction and the view that we are a dying race. This societal mindset promotes these points of view and threaten our very existence because when we are regarded as relics of the past, society feels justified in taking and using ancestral lands, burial sites, sacred sites, remains and artifacts to preserve this remote past. The underpinning view of, of divine ordained manifest destiny is maintained today through the melting pot theory of assimilation, absorption, and digestion into mainstream society. Dehumanized and objectified into commodities, we are incorporated, we are incorporated into the capitalist way of perceiving and valuing re reality. The end result is that the real need to respect our basic human rights as people is challenged by cries of reverse discrimination and what about our rights? I'd like to ask non-Native people in the audience today when it was the last time that they were asked to show blood quantum in order to receive communion. Nobody, right? This is what Native people have to do in order to be able to enter into and receive the sacred communion of the peyote. They must show blood quantum before they can do their ceremonies. The difference between how the world is viewed by mainstream society and Native peoples is vast. Native peoples are intricately linked to the land, to traditions and a way of life that is built upon systems of relationships where knowledge, equals responsibility, not only family, to clan, to community, to the Earth Mother, to Creator, and all our relations unto the future generations. Our ancestors define who we are, where we came from, and where we are headed. They are our footholds to the past, the present, and the future. Native cultures are living traditions. Our very existence relies upon our connection to all things. We do not fit neatly into compartmentalized structures or social ethics of mainstream society. 
Our churches are not structures built upon the earth, but rather they are Mother Earth herself, her mountains, her rivers, the boulders, and places that we find have special energy. The way in which we bury our relatives and the items that we place with them are crucially important to their journey to Boabe, which is the resting place of the ancestors. Under Puerto Rico's constitution, the freedom to live according to one's spiritual practices is the right of all people. So as Taino people, we understand that this right is applicable to us. So therefore, we emphasize that that right needs to include ensuring that our sacred sites and burial sites are preserved, respected, and protected against desecration and destruction. That is why the commercial display of ancestral remains and sacred artifacts in the name of science or culture or educational purposes, which are the direct result of past and present desecrations of those burial sites, not only violates our basic human rights, but also our fundamental right of freedom of religion. Moreover, we know there are viable alternatives to actual display of ancestral remains or sacred artifacts. Countries such as Cuba have already initiated this type, this use of replicas to depict burial sites, remains, and funerary artifacts. This practice would serve both the need to respect our ancestral burial sites, remains, and sacred artifacts, and also serve whatever cultural and educational purposes are deemed necessary. Lastly, the erection of symbols of genocide, such as monuments to early Spanish colonizers who promoted and practiced genocide and slavery of Taino, Carib, and African peoples, is a crass violation of fundamental human rights that continues to be sanctioned today. I'd like to share with you some of the tortures that our people underwent so that perhaps you'll be able to understand why we feel so strongly about this erection of monuments to people who committed these acts. The brutal torture of our ancestors included but was not limited to being gathered as a village to watch the torture of relatives who were impaled, hung, and burned. Babies were used as balls flung into the air and struck with sticks. Women's wombs were ripped open and the children taken from their wombs. In many instances, they were hung over a pit, smeared with grease, their buttocks and calves split open so that the scent of blood would attract the starving dogs who would be set loose to feast upon them. And then when the dogs had had their fill, the fire would be started and the ancestors burned alive as the village was forced to live on. These horrific acts speak for themselves. Why would a government or any people want to regret or honor these crimes against humanity? As Taino people, we view this as tantamount to erecting a monument of Hitler. While there is a small movement in the, UN, in the U.S. in which some states have returned ancestral remains to Native people, unfortunately, the majority of the world community still turns a deaf ear to our cries. The Grace Protection and Repatriation Act is not perfect, nor is it the be and be all and end all solution to this most grave issue of basic human rights. However, as Steve Russell said, who's a member of the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma. The repatriation movement is really an attempt to start at the bottom, towards the goal of being recognized as human beings who have families, children, relatives, and ancestors. The political aspect of repatriation is really quite simple. Until our demand to be recognized as human beings is met, none of the other crimes or indignities that we suffer can be addressed. In conclusion, the issue of repatriation maintains the dialogue going, the potential to educate others growing, 
the opportunity of knowing the truth of the crimes and indignity suffered by Native peoples ever present so that forgetting never becomes the reason for letting racism and colonialism to conquer or devastate another nation or to dehumanize and objectify one other human being. We trust that you will hear the ancestral call and to help us release the ancient hoopias who walk among us away to be laid to rest in peace. The time is now. Han han katu diao. Han han katu diao. Han han katu Yeah, could you maybe explain a little bit about the uh, el tumbo that you talked about earlier, the uh, the way that it's uh, presented in the town of Hajuja and how the municipality, you know, sort of like views that, how they present it, and about the general community, the people of Hajuja? Well, the tumba del indio in Hajuja is used as many of our sacred sites and burial sites as tourist attraction, you know, for tourists to come and sit here at. Um, we have worked with Hayuja for over 10 years now, and we've asked, and many other Native brothers and sisters who have come to our land have also raised the issue of removing the ancestral bones that were there on display uh, from that display. Um, it's perched on a, on a hillside, and a staircase was built. Uh, for the purposes of being able to reach that site where um, they claim that uh, Chief Ayuda uh, is resting there, but we know that this is not true. That burial site is actually the site of, of a woman. The bones there are actually female. Um, and they also had Senis, which is, uh, they are stone images that are very sacred to us because they contain um, parts of our story, but also they harness the energies um, of many different uh, entities. And they're only used in ceremonies. Some are used for purposes of uh, enhancing and uh, making the harvest good but these are not carved, and they're smaller, and they are triangular. I'd like to tell you a story about the success of being able to present and to dialogue about this issue. When we initially wrote a letter to our governor, who, by the way, has been very positive we're looking towards a very good relationship with her and looking towards um, their cooperation on this issue. I had asked um, a local school teacher to help me translate because my I was raised between New York and Puerto Rico, and so I can write better in English than I can in Spanish. So I, I recruited this teacher to help me to translate this letter. And so she did, and, and in the process of translating the letter, she became very, very interested in the whole issue and, and came to us and said, you know, I never thought about how horrible it is that your grave sites are defiled, are desecrated, that your bones are taken, that I can imagine how I would feel if they went into a local cemetery and did that to me. But as spirit moves things in, in ways beyond those that we could do. Um, one day as she was going to the classroom of another teacher, and when she got there, there happened to be a local 
and who brought for the benefit of the children some artifacts that he had found on his land, and among those artifacts was a Senin. And the children, when she went back to the classroom, were just touching and, and you know, just handling and, um, these objects without any sense of what it was that they were handling. And when the, the teacher who had helped us to translate this letter got there at that precise moment, he said, oh no. And think about the images in your church of the Virgin Mary. Would you jump up and handle them? Fall all over them? Oh, this is a great thing to do. And it was the candle in a very particular way. And so the children were taken aback by that, but did respond in a very reverent way. And they looked for something natural that they could place with them in the most natural thing they had was a piece of cardboard. But for them, because it was made of paper, paper feet from trees, it was a good place to place the And then they, they responded by being reverent and respectful of the image. And the teacher also in that classroom became interested, and they are now working locally towards having their local government pass a resolution for the municipal level. So that's why this opportunity to dialogue that the museum has opened up for us is such a, a wonderful thing because as people are educated and as they become familiar with why these issues are so important to us, things like this happen. When children respond. Um, so that's only one of many stories that have happened and many ways in which the community has responded in a very special and they've been able to work with us. And it is important for people to know that there's an ongoing desecration of the land in the Eggers where uh, our oldest ancestral folks came over and, and the remains of our ancestors are there and there's bombing that's destroying this land. And that's something that uh, we need people to help us in that cause to stop that bombing. Because it's sacred ancestral land that was left pristine by our people. And now it's being robbed. Now sorry, I'm just So there's a lot of information that even the scientific community has no access to. Let's say if a replica was made of that and a comparison was made to other peoples and talking about those migrations and things like that. And that's something that a lot of people don't realize is a result. It hasn't been recent, it's a 60 years of bombing. It's not yesterday bombing. The struggle of Yekes is, um, is old. Or say, oh, this is not new. The issue of Yekes and the bombing is not new. It has been raised at all levels of government. It has been protested. People have lost their lives. People have been jailed uh, for years. Um, the fact that, that finally now, all of the years of struggle because you know we struggle today and we're hurt today because someone opened the door for us yesterday um, and so the foundation for what is happening today was laid many many years ago and it was laid with our first ones that did it was our ancestors when they protested against the first colonizers who came to our shores and gave their lives and so our struggle uh, to maintain the balance and the equilibrium of 
our land and our energy has been since the beginning of time. I deal with teenagers, ninth graders, and a lot of them are from, you know, uh, Puerto Rico. And I wanted them to realize the kind of heritage that they have. I don't know if it's not my and, um, But the issue was the Mississippi. The teeth, the teeth, yeah. Oh, the teeth are the mixing. Right, so how can they um, appreciate both <laughs> cultures if you are there telling them, you know, the bad people came over, you know, so what do I tell these kids that are coming, trying to come to their own, trying to get a, their own identity and be cast they lean towards their, their own family. <laughs> 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 you know. it's, kind of, it's kind of like 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 saying to the tree, uh, you know, how can I enjoy your flowers uh, because I can't see the roots. One thing that, that we have to understand is that, uh, and this is a prophecy actually, uh, it was prophesied by Rasulé that the veil of Dimasor, the veil of, this, of invisibility, the fall of the people, and that for many years the people would not, it wouldn't just be that others would not see them, but there would come a time when, when the overgrowth and, and, and the extent of lies and promoted about the people and just copy their roots to the point where they couldn't even see themselves. Or said that when they looked in the mirror, they didn't see who they were anymore because of all of the lies that have been told. And I think Roger... Yeah, we just recently got the Encyclopedia Britannica to recognize that uh, what, you know, what they had in the books for years was somewhat incorrect. And if you look at that, you'll see that uh, it even says that you know the United Confederation of Dino People and the other active groups involved in the redefinition of it, and also to a Webster's Dictionary where you, where they used to define Dino as the extinct tribal group of the Caribbean has also changed that to rephrase it in a matter that uh, does not use the word extinct, but rather embellishes on you know the progress that had been made by groups that have put pressure on them 